Yeah, okay. Um, hello, uh, everybody in the Zoom. Uh, we got Zoom bombed just now, so I guess it was a good thing that we are we have our own junk channel. Uh, sorry to whoever's on YouTube. Um, so anyway, uh, welcome to the 50th edition of uh, Talk CSS. Uh, we, unfortunately, COVID is still a thing uh, in Singapore. For the benefit of our audience, some of whom I know you are not residing in Singapore, uh, we have our own term for uh, shelter in place or stay at home or MCO, depending. We call it circuit breaker or CV. Um, it is an appropriately Singaporean synonym. I assume that only the locals will get the joke. Let's leave it at that. So because uh, the situation is like that, we are still online. Uh, we are even more online than before because we used to be like, okay, speakers just huddle in one hacker space and uh, everybody else be at home. Uh, now everybody is at home, so amazing. So anyway, we have, we have a Twitter presence called Singapore CSS. We have a hashtag called Talk CSS. Use it if you feel like it. Don't use it if you don't feel like it. Um, next. So you can find us at these uh, links. Uh, nobody uses them, so we'll just move on. Uh, so I, I have a code of conduct. Uh, we do not tolerate harassment of participants of any kind. Uh, we got Zoom bombed, so clearly we need to do better. But like in general, uh, I think the, the rest of you are fairly decent people. So uh, yes, Akong says, behave yourself or you'll be kicked out. Uh, shout outs to engineers.sg who uh, will contain the post produced cuts of uh, all the talks today. Um, and we must also, as always, shout out uh, Chion, who is a sweat king of Singapore. He is not around uh, in this particular meetup at this particular time, uh, but know that we will always uh, give him a mention because he printed the first crop of stickers that. Singapore CSS ever had. We also have friends. Uh, uh, we we kind of were offshoot of our uh, sister meetup, uh, Singapore Jazz, uh, who, we, who is still going on, I think, occasionally. Uh, in, in theory, it's every month. Uh, like they are middle of the month, we are start of the month. Uh, uh, our best friend uh, meetup is called React Knowledgeable. Um, we have a link, we have a slide for them later, so never mind, move on. Host of the month, interwebs. It has not changed for the past four months. Color of the month, like everybody's, no, not everybody, my, my favorite segment is uh, color of the month. So in case you all didn't know, there are 148 named CSS colors, which is enough for 12 years plus 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 worth of meetups. Um, we are at about year four, so don't worry, lots of colors to go. Color of the month is Cornflower Blue. It's one of the longer names, but remember, when you're using a named CSS color, no spaces, no dashes, no underscores, it's just one single long word. Uh, you can read it however you want. You can say Cornflow uh, Blue, but like I think it's Cornflower Blue. Uh, so if you don't like hex codes, you don't like RGBA codes, uh, you can use this English word, beautiful English word, Cornflower blue. Where did it come from? Cornflower blue is a shade of a uh, medium to light blue containing relatively little green compared to blue. Uh, this hue was one of the favorites of a famous Dutch painter, uh, Johannes Vermeer. I think I butchered his name, but never mind. Uh, the most valuable of blue sapphires are also called cornflower blue. So this is a very valuable color here. Um, name CSS colors actually were pulled from the X11 colors. So this cornflower blue was part of the initial set of 68 that was committed to the X11 uh, repo on the 19th of August, 1985. Just useless trivia that you probably never need to know. So the agenda for today uh, is HTML and CSS news of the month by me, uh, very long, oh my god, I always wondered, like, is it, is it because everybody is stuck at home and then like, everybody's like, uh, yeah, let's just push features and write more specs and update everything, I don't know, really long, uh, and then a lot of people wrote articles, a lot of people made code pens, so uh, I'll just highlight a few of the, the more interesting ones, um, yeah, and then we have What's New in HTML uh, by um, our Original co-founder Chris Leonard dialing in all the way from Melbourne, so he's like in the wrong time zone, but 
Hi, hi, Chris. Thanks for coming. And uh, we have uh, how to build this speeding payment sheet by also um, uh, one of our very uh, familiar local speakers, Zell, who uh, probably is like bouncing his daughter on his knee right now. So I'm going to move on to the news. Let's see. Okay, I'll get rid of this. And share the appropriate screen. Zoom is so unwieldy. Okay. Uh, HTML and CSS news for the month of May. So uh, 75, uh, Firefox. 75 uh, was released, month of May. So bunch of bug fixes, lots of stuff, blah, 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 blah. The only thing I want to talk about is uh, the min function, man, max function, and clamp function. So these uh, mathematical, okay, not really mathematical, but like CSS functions have been implemented in 75. So it allows for a range of values, which is really cool because we never used to be able to do range. The first inkling of uh, a range that we could actually do, you had to use grid. You could use a min max uh, function within the context of grid. And now that these like uh, more generalized functions have come out, you can use min, max, and clamp. So what min does is that you it accepts uh, one or more. So you can put in a bunch of values. It will, uh, and apparently it, it, it's, it will return you, or no, it will use, uh, the, it's called like a maximum allowed value based on like where you want it to be. Uh, max is converse, so it's like a minimum allowed value. And then clamp is like the, there's a max and a min. So, so this is uh, something in 75, so it's like stable. So like everyone can go and try. You don't have to uh, go and tweak your settings to do it. There, there is something that I want to talk about that does require that uh, later. So there's also a, a round up a post uh, from hex.mozilla where they talk about all the features in, in 75. So that's quite good. Uh, let me refresh this because I pushed a change five seconds ago. Uh, Safari technology preview. So um, it's the Safari but with a purple logo. And I think they do releases every two weeks. So it's, it's quite nice because they, they, this is literally, I think, the, the latest and greatest of features that you can find in a browser. People like to shit on Safari, but uh, Safari technology preview is, is, is actually pretty good if you want the, to, to see implementations of, of like the really new stuff. So for example, they, they, they put in selectors level four. Um, support for these units, LH, which is line height, and uh, R, LH, I think mean, root, root line height, I think. Um, so LH is equal to the computed value of line height while root LH, RLH is, is um, I believe, uh, line height of the root element as opposed to the current element. Um, there's a, someone wrote an article on CSS tricks. So it's also in, in the links. Um, what else? What else? Let's see, okay, uh, CSS colorful. Okay, a lot of these are bug fixes. So, no, not gonna talk about this. Uh, this is fun. Um, okay, the entire browser is shared, so I can open new tab. I love this bug or uh, issue report because revert the revert of revert. Um, there is a CSS value known as revert. Um, I think when Chromium first released it, there was an issue. So they like reverted the revert before reverting it back again. So it's, I just like this title. I'm like, come on guys. Amazing. Uh, the gap property is finally in Chrome Canary. I mean, Firefox had it for so long and I've used gap in so many places and then I've always had to write a fallback for, for, for Chrome. And now I'm like, oh, okay, okay. It's in Canary. So hopefully eventually it will be like standardized, which would be nice. Um, and also, my not so secret, not very secret, secret agenda is to sort of like have convinced Chrome people that they need better grid tooling. Because if you used to, if you are using uh, Chrome to do to grid, there's no numbers and, and stuff like that. But oh, look, numbers. I mean, it, it is slightly similar to the, what do you call, uh, Firefox implementation. This is a good sign, my friends. 
So yeah, that's browser news. Uh, spec news is surprisingly long. Uh, of course, there have been months where I had no spec updates. But this month, we have a long list. So uh, speech, CSS speech module candidate recommendation actually got released. So I don't think a lot of people are very familiar with CSS speech because like truth be told, I mean, the proportion of people who are uh, very familiar with, with screen media readers are also um, not that many. Uh, I'm very glad Zell is around because he actually dug into a lot of the accessibility stuff. Uh, so if you have any questions, I believe he can answer them. I'm just putting this out there. Uh, so the, the, the speech module basically just defines uh, oral CSS properties. Um, so, so I guess you can sort of like style the, the way the, the screen, screen reader is gonna, gonna read the text. So uh, that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, color adjustment module one, very, very new spec. Um, so what it does is for, for user, user preferred color preferences. So you, you would have things like um, color scheme property. So like light, dark, whatever. Um, there's forced color adjust. So it's, that, that one was put in for like, you can force a more accessible uh, color scheme, I believe. So it, it's, it's very, very new, um, I'm, I'm like initial working draft kind of things. But I think this, this, is, a, this is a pretty cool, uh, I, I always love the color related module. So maybe I'm biased. Uh, media queries level five uh, got updated. I talked about this the past couple of months because they've been doing a bit of work on it. So I think they just pushed a new update. Uh, properties and values API level one. Uh, so I wanted, this is not new, like no updates, but I just wanted to uh, po point at it because CSS tricks also released uh, an article on the add property value. Uh, I also, it was quite new to me because it's so draft, it's so draft that like, it might not even be real, but what it's supposed to do is it represents a custom property uh, registration directly in your style sheet without having to run any JS. So that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. So this is kind of more, uh, this is very related to like the Houdini and the custom properties uh, uh, segment of, of CSS. So those of, this is something that is uh, interesting to you. This is something to look out for. It really looks quite interesting. Uh, CSS box model is a spec in and of itself. So basically it got split out from CSS 2.1, uh, where, where it was a full spec. And I think the chap nine, chapter nine, oh no, okay, chap section eight was, was box model, which is, talks about the margin uh, padding. Uh, I think borders is not in here, but they are, they're splitting it out and defining it in its own spec. And, and they updated level three and split some stuff out to level four. But essentially this is the spec that focuses just on the box model. Um, I think this is better because they go into more in depth about how it works as well as there's more diagrams. The original one was so confusing. I don't know if you read it. I stared at it like for some other presentations I had to do and I still don't, don't understand it. They say it's English, it's not. Um, but this one is, so you can give it a try. Uh, CSS text module level three working graph was also ad up updated. Text module is nice. Um, so basically, this is the module that covers the bit that does, you know, line breaking, justifications, alignment, your, your white space handling and stuff, text transformation. And here is also where there's a bit of um, internationalization aspects to it because there are, there are certain uh, properties, for example, hanging punctuation, this property actually is quite specific to typesetting for uh, Han characters, East Asian text. So I also quite uh, quite fond of this module. Uh, Ruby is, is tangentially related to East Asian text because Ruby um, is, 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 a, is an annotation on top of uh, like, it, it's, it's not language specific, but it's most commonly seen for East Asian text. So it's kind of like to indicate to you how to read uh, each character. Uh, so you can do this on the web there's a Ruby element and a corresponding CSS for you to style it. And I think they're making it more granular in terms of how you want to uh, lay it out, like the spacing between the, the Ruby characters and the main characters, um, whether 
whether you want them aligned to the side or how it's going to be, you know, spaced out. So, so this is what the CSS Ruby uh, module covers and it, the corresponding HTML element is a Ruby element. So if that's something that you work with, probably uh, you'd like to, you know, look into this. A lot of interesting things. These are like way more links that I normally put in. Uh, CSS findings from the new Facebook design is a really interesting article because like I think most people got like the new rollout about like this month, last month. So this gentleman, um, he's like a CS walking CSS encyclopedia. He he goes into very in-depth into CSS properties in general, but he also does these like case studies. So I read like follow him on all the things. Really, really interesting articles. Uh, Dark mode was really suspect overflow. So they talked about how they implemented it. I thought this was really nice. Uh, so there's the functions that we talked about and um, you can use CSS to control text selection, just in case you didn't know. But I want to highlight the cool code pens section because um, this lady, uh, Sarah, I can't pronounce her last name, so I'm just going to try. Sarah Forsheim. These are like, these are the best shit on the internet, come on. As you can see, the CSS column is empty. This is not an image, my friends. It's CSS. So like, since everyone's playing Animal Crossing, I, I guess, you know, the switch is a very apt uh, piece of art. Uh, oh, oh, this was, this is also quite cute. Uh, yeah, you can, oh, uh, and I also want to highlight the cat you know it's a cat so yeah uh animated snorlax so like meow. that's nice again <laughs> javascript is 404 i love people and and they are creative with i also have a favorite http uh status code we can talk about this like next year's april fool's day uh this is very very nice and uh is it spring is over uh Singapore is very hot. I'm very unhappy, but so let's just look at a cat typing. So anyway, that's it for news updates. Uh, I've dragged this on long enough, so I'm going to hang over to Chris. Stop share.